Hi guys, my name is Biora. In the last video, we used our Riot API key to grab the solo queue ladder. In this video, we're going to look at a specific player and try to grab their match history and see if we can look at some matches. So first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to have to go to developer.riotgames.com. So developer.riotgames.com. We're going to have to regenerate our API key if we haven't done so already, although I've already done so. And then we'll have to put that in our .env file in here. And then we'll have to restart our Jupyter node book now since last video i've made some changes to my code uh, that you'll notice here one of the changes is that i've made this get puid function uh, able to be run either with game name and tagline so you know your riot id and then hashtag whatever na1 or you, everyone has a unique summoner id and i also want to be able to get puid via that so i've done that as well from a different endpoint named summoner before summoners and i'll explain why i've done that later i also gave it some commentation via a doc string this is called and so it's very good coding practice i'd recommend whenever you write a new function that you end up doing that i also made changes to this function here one i changed the name uh, and then i also made the output a little different so instead of giving for example game name hashtag tagline like before i am now giving a dictionary of game name and tagline so that when i return this i can say id game name makes it much better coding wise and for the ladder function i did what i mentioned at the end of last video which is i made it so that if i only want the top 300 i don't need to run the endpoints for the grandmaster ladder and master ladder this saves a lot of time for computing and let me show you what that actually means. So if I was to run get ladder 300, let's see what this does. So this runs in 0 0.8 seconds. And then if I do that, it runs in two seconds. So you can see if I am doing the full get ladder, if I want the full 2000 like before, it'll run in two seconds. But if I only want the top 300, then it runs in less time, which is what we wanted, right? So Let's take a look at one of these players. Say I want to look at Spica. I don't have his game name and tagline on here because this specific endpoint for the ladders is very outdated compared to Riot's new standards, which is a bit frustrating, uh, but they do have the summoner ID here. So that is why I made that change to the above function, but we'll take his summoner ID and we will try to get the PUU ID. There's also some weirdness with the endpoints where for some reason, some endpoints use Americas and some endpoints use NA1. And so that is also going to be an annoyance. So I'll show you what I mean, but we're gonna get PUID summoner ID equals this. And then region is NA1. There we go, that's his PUID. And now we can take a look at his match history. So to do that, we're gonna to have to go to the APIs. We're going to find the match v5 endpoint, and then we are going to, in here, find the by PUIDs endpoint. And let's copy that. And we'll say root equals, I'm gonna leave it blank for now, grab that up top, and endpoint equals this. Make that a function string and I'll grab the root up here. So root URL, we'll say, equals that. Just a quick note, uh, I realized after I was running this that I accidentally added an extra forward slash here. So in the endpoint string, get rid of that first forward slash, otherwise it's gonna throw an error when you try to do this later. I just cut this all out because it's quicker for editing, but just so you know. We'll say requests.get root URL plus endpoint plus API key equals, and then plus API key. I'm gonna wrap this in a function. We'll say this is define a function called get match history. And the things that I need here, it looks like I need region equals none, PUID equals none. And I will return this response return response dot json and we'll see what's inside that and then get i'll have to try both of these so i'll see what it is americas because this is the updated endpoint so i think it's probably americas puid equals this puid here 
There we go, that's what I wanted. So this has given me the last 20 games that Spica has played, uh, which is good, but ideally we want more than that. So let's go back here and I'll show you. Uh, down here, there are actually some query parameters that we could add. Now I put in the PUU ID here, but if you see here, this value count optional value defaults to 20, meaning it gives us the last 20 games, but it goes from zero to 100. So I can actually just say, I want that to be 100. But how do I actually do that? Uh, I ran this against my key and down here you'll see the actual link. And if you copy this link, which I'll just do here, I'll take this link and put it in here. Um, I'm gonna abstract out the PUID part just so you can see things a little more clearly because it's kind of large. We'll say this is PUID. And then if you notice, there is start equals zero and count equals 100, which was what we had here. Start equals zero, count is 100. So I can abstract these out too and make these variables. So start equals start and count equals count. Uh, and if I add those as variables, so I'll say query params equals, and this will be an F string too. And we'll say start equals start, count equals count. Um, and in this case, we'll do plus query params and then another plus. And this time we have to change this to an and because the question mark is only if it's the only or if it's the first uh, query parameter, but in this case it is our last one. So we change that to an and, we add our API key and we'll have to add up here, start equals none, count equals none. Actually, we'll do some defaults. We'll say start is zero, count is 20. This way, if you don't input these, they automatically go to zero and 20, which is the default. So now let's run that and we'll add start equals zero count is 100. And now we get 100 games. Assumedly, I'm assuming there's 100 in here. I can actually check. Let's check. We could do length of that. We'll see how many are in that. There you go. We got 100 games. Perfect. And now that we have that, we would have to go through each game and see what's inside each game. So let's try that. So I have this match ID and we'll say define a new function called get match data from ID and we'll say match ID equals none and I'll probably I'll just copy most of this so root URL um, and then there's going to be a new endpoint in here for that so I'll find that real quick uh, matches by match ID so I'll take this and we'll put that in there. And then this, I'll name this the same thing just so that it, it fits. Uh, and we'll do region equals none. And then kind of same thing here. I'm just gonna copy paste this. Response is that we're gonna get rid of the query parameters here because we don't need them. And then this is gonna be a question mark because it's our first query parameter here. And then return response json so let's try running that so i'll do get match data from id region in this case since we are using the match v5 i will do americas and then match id is going to be this id here and we'll see what happens now in here we get a ton of stuff uh, instead of showing you here, I'll show you on the Riot website here. It's a bit easier to see. <clears throat> so in here, we're gonna get all these variables. We'll get the metadata, which is this here. So data version, match ID, and participants. And participants is the list of PUIDs for every player in the game. So that is this here. Actually, let me open this. So this is a huge amount of data in here. Uh, but match ID is that here. That's all of the participants in this game. And then we have the info DTO, which is info here. And that is a dictionary that contains all of this stuff, which has another nested dictionary in it with participants. Um, so if you look here, down here, it has another nested list of participant DTO, which has a ton of stuff. This one is the one that has everything for every player. So that info DTO has a ton of information in it because it contains participants, which also has a ton of information. And then it also contains teams, which has a ton of information. So 
every match has a ton of stuff. Um, I'm not gonna show you how to process all that in this video, but I'll show you what it looks like. Actually, if you want to take a look here, it is actually, I wonder if I've already visited. No, I haven't. So github.com slash, this should work, I think. Yeah. So I've already done all this. I'll show you what it looks like, but in here, processing that match, the process match JSON function, there is a ton of just trying to get that stuff processed. So it's not that hard, but it's just one of those things where it takes a bit of time and it would make this video super long, so I'm not gonna do it. But once you process all that, then you can add it to a data frame. And then once you have it in a data frame, you can add it to SQL and then start storing it and managing it more effectively. But this is the first step to grabbing someone's actual match history and looking at their actual matches. Next video, we'll go into processing these matches. So I'll see you next video.